Hey, it's Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. And this video is a protocol of herbs and drugs that are used for prostate cancer. Now, I am not a medical doctor, I'm a chiropractor. So, and I got this information from this book. Now, don't go to your medical doctor and say, hey, I saw this chiropractor on YouTube talking about cancer. Do not do that because they just will probably get pissed off and uh, they may dismiss you from your practice. Okay, I don't treat cancer. I never did. I never have. I never will. It's not my license. I made that decision a long time ago. And there's a million medical doctors that supply drugs. They write prescriptions. That's their job. And I'm the guy that's more in charge of the herbs. And that's been my expertise for over 20 years now. So let's talk about um, this slide right here. So this is from this book, okay, How to Starve Cancer, Jane McClellan. I interviewed her a couple weeks ago. I'll put this video at the very end of the interview video at the very end so you can watch that. And so here we have this press pulse philosophy right here. So you want to, when you have a cancer cell, you want to normalize the cell signaling and how it gets information from the rest of the body and from other cancer cells. And then right over here, you want to starve the cancer cells that feeds on protein, sugar, and fat. It also uses protein and fat as building blocks. So when you deplete those three, then the cancer cells have less food. You're starving the cancer. And uh, then you want to block the metastasis. So you don't want those cancer cells to spread. What happens is they go in the bloodstream and they get stuck at a certain location and that's where they spread. Well, it turns out that there's an antiplatelet um, blood thinning drug that will prevent that. And so it's in the research and we're going to go over that. So here we have, uh, and there's other growth factor inhibitors too. Okay, and then over here we have this pulse, the kill phase. Apoptosis is the name of, is the word where cells die. And so it's a combination of an NSAID, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, but not aspirin because aspirin is not strong enough. Combine that with a statin because statins lower the fat and they, and they can kill cancer cells. And I'll show you the research on this. IV vitamin C. That can kill cancer cells, and it also raises oxygen. And down here we have other oxygen therapies, hyperbaric oxygen therapy, for example, hydrogen peroxide, uh, there's others. And then here we have low-dose chemo. The standard chemotherapy, therapeutic drugs for your cancer can be used here, and it's easier and you get better results when you're starving the cancer in the first place. Now, the low-dose chemo is ideally used at a lower dose and for less lesser period of time. As opposed to high dose, long period of time, that's when chemotherapy can kill you. And uh, I see oncologists always give the same dose no matter what for, lo for the same period of time. And um, they only stop when the patient says, I'm dying, you're going to kill me. I've actually seen people die from the chemotherapy. But when you're doing these earlier steps, you're starving the cancer and now they're easier to kill. And that's when the low dose chemotherapy comes into play. So ask your MD about that, your oncologist. And uh, oncologists love this book. They love this book. They get better results with this book. So hopefully yours will love the book too. So what I did is I went on PubMed and I searched out prostate cancer plus the name of a therapy. So we have some herbs in here. We have some drugs in here. We got some vitamins in here. And it, some of them had research to show that they worked and others had no research. So I just left those out. Obviously, we just want the things that work. And so here, for example, we have metformin. That's a drug for uh, diabetes. And so it lowers insulin, lowers blood sugar to try to, and in the use of cancer, it is, it'll starve the energy, the sugar of, you know, from the cancer cell. So now the cancer cell doesn't have all the extra energy it needs to replicate. It has to replicate very quickly. So let's open this link. These are all clickable links, and we'll see what this says. It says metformin and prostate cancer, a new role for an old drug. So there's the, there's the study right there, and I'm just showing you that you can read through that uh, summary, the purpose, and all that, and give that to your MD. Let's look at berberine. Here I have two links for this herb called berberine. Now, I carry berberine and curcumin and these other herbs that are in here. So now there's three lines in this title. It says, Berberine inhibits the metastatic ability of prostate cancer cells. Okay, now as a lay person, as a patient, that's all you need to read. Now if you're a scientist or you're the medical doctor, 
You can read the rest by suppressing epithelial to mesenchymal transition EMT associated genes with predictive and prognostic relevance. Okay, maybe that went over your head, but look, the first line is what is important. Berberine inhibits the metastatic ability of prostate cancer cells. It prevents it from spreading around the body. How cool is that? So here we have niclosamine, and this is actually an anti-parasitic drug, anti-helminthic drug right here. So it um, also inhibits the prostate cancer cell invasion. So here's a prostate cancer and it's spreading through the prostate itself. So an anti-parasitic drug does this. So it's being used off-label, that's what that means. Here's Lipitor. This is uh, known for lowering cholesterol. It's very controversial because it only helps 0.8 to 1.2% of the people that take it for heart disease. And so 99% of the people, it doesn't work for them, but there, it's used you know, throughout the country um, because it's forced on you by the MD because they are forced to use it by their licensing agency. All right, but, but look, if we click on Lipitor, it has a use regarding cancer. Statin use in prostate cancer, an update. So let's uh, look at this study. I, I'm scrolling down, and there is a line in here that I highlighted. In summary, statins may inhibit prostate carcinogenesis by suppressing cell growth, suppressing angiogenesis slash invasion, and induction of apoptosis. It does four things that are beneficial for men with prostate cancer. Now, you're not taking it for 20 years. You're not losing your brain power, causing Alzheimer's. You're not depleting your testosterone. You know, this is a short period of time at a lower dose to kill the cancer. Now, curcumin, let's talk about this. I carry the best curcumin on the planet. I'm very biased in that statement, but here's why I say it. Because curcumin is not very well absorbed by the human body. So the one that I carry is called turmeric forte from MediHerb. And what they do is they take their curcumin and they wrap it with fenugreek. Fenugreek is very absorbable. And so now it goes in the body, it's digested, and the fenugreek is digested away. The curcumin opens up. There it is. Your body uses it. So one pill of turmeric forte is like 50 pills of some other brand. All right, now here we have a, a sample of metformin plus another medication. Here we have another medication right here, three bromopyruvate. Let's click on that and see what that says. So metastatic prostate cancer cells are highly sensitive to three bromopyruvic acid. It suppresses sugar. It's, it says is a promising anti-cancer agent. All right, how cool is that? Here's metformin plus valproic acid. Here's green tea. Okay, it's also, it's called ECGC. That's the active component of green tea. It's also found in white tea, black tea, or oolong tea. Here's ursolic acid. Here's resveratrol. These are the other supplements. And I carry resveratrol. Um, we are currently looking for a really good ursolic acid supplement. If, um, if you're not a patient of mine, you can just get them on uh, Amazon. And once we have an ursolic acid, we will sell it to any, any non-patient from our website. And that'll be in the next few weeks. And here's quercetin. Here's the diet. So this has been my forte my whole career. This is, it's supplements and diet, right? So you go to the medical doctor for the drugs. This diet here is a pescatarian. It's a more of a vegetarian fish diet. Not heavy red meat, you know, heavy fatty pork sausages. And I never thought I would ever recommend a pescatarian diet, but here I am because this is how prostate cancers, um, they don't like this food. They want heavy, fatty meat. You got to go more vegetarian with fish. Can you believe I just said it? But hey, that's the truth of it. Here we have artemisinin. This, I have a really good artemisinin product. Here's the deal with herbs. Every herb needs to be at least two grams per day, equivalent dried herb, right? So your pills, let's say you take three pills a day, they have to be equal to two grams of the dried herb. Now, when you go to a store and you buy artemisinin or wormwood, it'll say 100 milligrams per capsule. So then you have to take 20 a day. You know, the bottle's gone in two and a half days. So with our product, artemisinin, 
you take two or three pills a day, you're above two grams equivalent dried herb. And then here I have four links regarding artemisinin. Here I have metformin plus valproic acid and mebendazole, which is another antiparasite, um, anti-helminthic medication. So let's click on that and see what this says. Repurposing drugs in oncology is called redo. And here they talk about mebendazole as an anti-cancer agent. So I'm putting these below in the video description box so you can copy and paste and send them around. Um, it's free right now. Later I may do something like charge seven bucks for it because it takes me many hours to go through all the therapies and all the different pathways of how individual cancers feed. And if you have the initial stages, let's say, of prostate cancer, it'll only feed on a few things um, through a th few different path pathways. But the longer you have it, the more it feeds. It'll, out of 19 different feeding pathways, you know, it goes from 2 to 7 to 9 to 12. It'll gather its food from different ways. That's why you want to do this multi-therapeutically. Instead of just trying to find that one silver bullet, you're finding multiple silver bullets and you're spraying those bullets against the cancer, which goes against the current medical thinking. They do phase one, phase two, phase three trials on individual poisonous chemicals. And they're looking for success with one thing. And it's been horrible. The results are not there. So with this approach, you're looking at multiple things. If I had prostate cancer, I would be doing all of these right now. This is how I think right now. I'd be looking at all of these. And, um, and you're looking at a team of healthcare providers because most medical doctors don't know the first thing about curcumin. They don't know that it's not very digestible by the body. And they don't know what resveratrol is or quercetin. And they don't know much about the diets either. And I don't know much about these drugs and I don't prescribe them. There's a million medical doctors that will. And hopefully you have one that's friendly about this information. And oncologists are loving this book. So find a good oncologist, and if you don't, find a good family doctor. And you have to learn yourself, and then you may have to even train the medical doctor. So, and it's a process. And later there's going to be um, whole protocols on individual cancers, and I'm actually working on that myself. So I did an oral cancer protocol. I'm currently working on the three uh, major skin cancers, and um, I've, been re I've had requests to do colorectal cancer, a bunch of different cancers. But what I did initially when I first made the prostate cancer and oral cancer protocol, I gave them to Jane to put on her Facebook page, which is um, how to use off-label drugs for cancer. And she, put, she posted them immediately. And I got a bunch of thank yous and I, I got a bunch of other requests. But I was looking earlier... Obviously, somebody else has done this. Like, is it, isn't there a list of drugs and supplements that somebody's already put together for prostate cancer? The answer is no. Nobody else has done it this way. Other people have researched it and they've organized it in different ways, which is great. But I, reach, I put it down this way so that you can just simply click. And you say, well, what about berberine? Click. There it is. And you show it to your MD. Look, here's all the research I want to take curcumin and berberine and ursalic acid. I want you to give me metformin and um, Lipitor and an antiparasitic drug. Click, 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 click. It's just, it's just that fast and that easy. So that's how I'm putting this together. And over time, I'll be doing more and more uh, different types of different phenotypes, different types of cancer. And, you know, my purpose in life is to bankrupt drug companies. And I'm recommending drugs here. And, of course, I'm not writing prescriptions for them, but uh, these new anti-cancer drugs that came out of the Obamacare era are $100,000 a year. Lipitor, metformin, anti-parasitic drugs are super cheap compared to the new um, socialized medicine cancer drugs. You know, with socialized medicine, the price goes up because the payment is guaranteed by you, the taxpayer, so Big Pharma loves that, and they're going to charge more and more and more. So I just want to restate that I am not the source of this information. The source of the information is PubMed, right? I'm a chiropractor. Don't ask me for uh, a prescription of metformin. Don't ask me to talk to your medical doctor. 
I'm actually doing the work that medical doctors should be doing, right? I'm putting this on you guys, <laughs> on you individually and as a group to educate yourself. And the way that you find um, a therapy for cancer is you type in PubMed, the cancer, and then you put in the name of the therapy. That's how I put these together. So buy the book, read through it, and uh, share this video with people that have pr prostate cancer. And then give me a thumbs up, please give me a thumbs up. And then engage below with comments and suggestions. And I'm, I'll read questions, I may or may not answer questions, but engage below and help each other out. If there's a troll, I'm deleting and banning that person as fast as I see that comment. No trolls allowed. We're all here to help each other and to get better. All right, so see you at the next video.